Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tiara and Doc coming soon. Just kidding, but hopefully, like, <laughs> for real. Yeah, it's important because, I mean, especially for, like, a new generation who maybe have heard the name Leonard Peltier, but, like, really don't know any details. Um, and then, or even just people who have been following the case, but still don't know these details, who don't know the legal breakdown. And, of course, um, you know, within, of course, since then, um, some of the people who helped imprison him have now spoken in favor of his clemency, right? Just simply on the basis that legally it does not, it doesn't hold up, right? Yeah, no, I think like, yeah, like James Reynolds um, was one of his appeals, the appeals prosecutor. I think he worked with the prosecutor's office then. And it was just like, this is, you know, a time period when this could have gone through was, a, you know, that time period in, in AIM. And I think it's still like my whole thing, though. Yeah. And I agree with a lot of that. Like, that's great. These people are coming forward. But I'm also just like, but nothing has really changed. The FBI used an informant to um, give a gun to a water protector in Standing Rock, um, which is entrapment. And, you know, <laughs> who, you know, she was and she ended up serving several years in prison for that. And, you know, they're still like surveilling, you know, um, indigenous movements, you know, it doesn't matter whether or not they're, you know, if they're picking up guns like the American Indian movement did, or they're, they're kind of eschewing armed resistance, like as we are seeing today with, with um, the water protector movement, the crackdown is just as brutal. Um, and just as just as intense. And I, I was just thinking about this, when we saw the the images of the Keystone pipeline, um, that exploded, I think it was in Washington County in Kansas, spilled like 14,000 gallons or 14,000 barrels of oil enough to fill like um, Olympic size w a swimming pool. And, you know, it's the largest leak on that pipeline. Uh, and, and nobody from uh, TC Energy, which is former, uh, formerly Trans Canada Energy is being charged for destroying property, the very things that water protectors, you know, serve time for um, destroying water, destroying the land, and not even committing to a plan or even admit like admitting that they can actually clean up um, the spill that says nothing of the the knowing kind of like destruction of the planet for for these purposes, you know, of of profit, um, and the and holding hostage, you know, um, native people and every, you know, every group of people who's who doesn't, you know, who's poor and marginalized, doesn't really have a control over this, this current, you know, society, uh, about the kind of energy that we consume and how we consume that energy. Um, so I think it's, yeah, I think the implications are, are kind of far reaching in in this case, and they go beyond just like a single man. And the fact, the other aspect, and I'll just shut up after this, but the other aspect of it that I found really fascinating is the church committee and and all the revelations that were made by the Senate investigation around the FBI's kind of uh, deliberate violation of civil rights, um, the CIA's you know, surveillance of domestic protest movements, the army's, the, the U S military's role in crushing, you know, uh, anti-war movements in, within the United States and civil rights movements within the United States. And they focus on a, almost every single group, you know, the Panthers, uh, you know, Vietnam veterans against the war, all these other groups, except for they stop short of, you know, uh, anything that's like kind of after COINTELPRO, uh, in 1972 doesn't really make the cut. Um, but the, you know, so like this, this idea that, you know, somehow we can, we can look at the Panthers and we can understand like, yeah, that was, they were directly targeted and infiltrated by the FBI, the FBI waged a war. Well, the difference between the Panthers and the American Indian movement is that like the Panthers never engaged in armed on an armed confrontation with the FBI. American Indian movement did at Wounded Knee, um, and then also at um, at the Jumping Bull property, uh, but the the American Indian movement also didn't dissolve um, after you know these kind of like the heyday of of the nineteen seventies, and it didn't. It yeah, sure, it's like it waned in its in its influence and support, 
after the Vietnam War kind of like formally, you know, was the United States kind of ended its involvement in there, but it still continued on. And I think that's the sore spot here is to um, really control the, hist the historical narrative of like, how